is about lab equipment and usage that we use in our sixth grade lab. Um, this covers learning targets three and four, which are about uh, lab equipment names and uh, proper usage of lab equipment. The first piece of lab equipment I would like to introduce to you is the graduated cylinder. Uh, this piece of equipment's job is to measure volume of liquid, liquids. It does an excellent job of doing this. Um, it's designed to be very accurate. Uh, if you notice, on the sides of the graduated cylinder, there are lines, uh, and then there's a scale and numbers. Uh, later on, we'll be teaching you how to read a graduated cylinder, uh, but these uh, pieces of equipment are very accurate at measuring volume of a liquid. Now, later on, we're going to see some equipment that also has lines um, and measurement uh, lines, but they're not as accurate as the graduated cylinder. So in lab, the only thing uh, we're going to have you use to measure uh, graduate, I mean, measured liquids is the graduated cylinder. The next piece of equipment is called the Florence flask. Uh, it is designed for uniform heating and ease of swirling. You'll notice that it has this unique round shape at the bottom. Uh, that does two things. Uh, first, if you're going to heat a liquid, you can heat it from the bottom. You know, you imagine like a, a candle or a, what we call a Bunsen burner, which has got a flame. And you can imagine this sitting over on top of that flame. Well, with this piece of equipment, the liquid's going to get hot at the bottom near the, you know, the heat source. And then it's going to travel up. Um, and then the cool liquid that's at the top is going to code back down, come down. And so what ends up happening is the liquid gets heated at a constant temperature from both top and bottom. Now, that doesn't necessarily happen with all pieces of equipment. Imagine, um, later on we're going to look at a, a, a beaker. Um, it more looks like a cup. Uh, it doesn't have that nice round shape. Well, what ends up happening is the liquid at the bottom gets hotter than the liquid at the top. And so it does not have that unique uh, uniform heating. Uh, also, with that round uh, bulbous shape, you can grab the neck of the Thorns flask, that long top part, and you can swir swirl it around. And if you know, have two liquids together and you want to mix them, you can swirl them around this way, and the liquid's going to stay in the uh, flask. Now, if you try to do that with a cup or something, you know, that kind of shape, uh, you can imagine you swirl around, the liquid's going to you know, fall all over the place, it's going to fall on your shoes and, and clothes and make a big old mess. So that's the Florence flask. The next one I just got done talking about is the beaker. Um, it's used for um, holding liquid mainly, but we can use it for all sorts of different things. Uh, you can hold uh, awesome solids and things like that in there. Um, now, as I was saying earlier, you'll notice that on the beaker it also has measurement lines. But these are not as accurate as a graduated cylinder. Um, they're just kind of approximate. It even tells you on the side that, you know, approximately you know, 5% error there. And what that means is that there's a chance it's, you know, 5% off on the volume if you use that as your uh, tool to measure volume. So it's not exactly accurate. Uh, so we don't want to use a beaker to, you know, measure volume. Again, that's what the graduated cylinder is for. Uh, this is just to kind of hold chemicals and things like that and transfer things. The next flask we have is the Erlenmeyer flask, and again, you know, it's got, you look, as you look at it, it's got a unique shape. It's got that triangular shape. Um, this allows, uh, like the Florence flask, to uh, mix chemicals. You can, you know, grab the uh, Erlenmeyer flask and swirl it around, and the chemical should stay in the flask itself. Now, unlike the uh, uh, Florence flask, though, you're not going to get that uniform heating, um, but you can, you know, again, mix chemicals. Uh, together. Watch glass. Um, this looks like a gigantic contact lens. Um, we can use this if we have a uh, chemical that has something in it, like for example salt water, where we got two chemicals kind of combined and we want to get the, we want to remove the water. So what we can do is we can heat the watch glass and the water will evaporate and this, you know, for example, salt water, the salt will, you know, kind of evaporate, you know, stay in the, um, the glass. Though as the water evaporates, the salt will kind of dissipate out and then stay in the glass. And so we can separate, you know, salt from the water. Uh, it's also good if you want to uh, weigh some uh, solids, especially if they're in powder form or small. 
uh, you can put them on the watch glass and then it's easier to weigh them and then try to keep track of them. Uh, they can also be used as cover for beakers. The petri dish is used um, to mainly culture cells. It's a small, like it, it looks like a dish really. Um, it's it's not very thick, and ours are plastic. Uh, and what we can do is uh, they're great for growing bacteria or growing cells. Uh, you can pour like this. It looks like gelatin, but it's an auger, which is a uh, it's like a food for cells. And uh, you can put that at the bottom of these petri dishes, and then since they're clear, they'll let light in and things like that. But uh, a lot of people, well, our petri dishes also have a cover. So if you're going to grow something that smells like bacteria, then you can also cover them so the light comes through, but yet the smell doesn't come out. Um, so that's what we use petri dishes mainly for. Everybody's probably familiar with the test tubes. Um, our test tubes are glass, so you've got to be careful handling them. Uh, but test tubes are used for holding chemicals. Uh, pretty simple um, devices. Along with test tubes though, you need to use a test tube rack. Um, these are wooden uh, racks that have holes in them, uh, the size for test tubes, and this basically holds the test tubes in place. Uh, as you probably can tell, uh, test tubes have a round bottom, so they can, you can't like stand one on the side by itself. You gotta use a test tube rack to kind of hold it. Um, so that's what the test tube rack does, it just kind of holds the uh, test tubes uh, while you're doing your experiment. The next thing is a rubber stopper. Obviously made from rubber, that's the name rubber stopper, and it prevents chemicals from coming out. And there's also different sizes of rubber stoppers. Uh, we have some stoppers that plug up Erlenmeyer flask and Florence flask. We have small rubber stoppers that plug up uh, test tubes. Uh, some rubber stoppers have a hole in them, and you may be like, well, why does it have a hole in it? Um, that's so that you could put a, a tube in there, like a straw or a plastic tube, and allow gases to escape while chemicals are reacting with each other. Um, we have stoppers that do have holes, and we have stoppers that don't have holes, uh, depending on our need. The next one is a test tube holder. Now this device uh, is used to hold test tubes while they're being heated. Uh, test tubes being made of glass, if you're going to you know, heat a chemical in a test tube, the glass is going to get extremely hot. So you never want to hold a test tube while it's being heated. This device allows you to kind of hold on to that test tube uh, without burning your fingers. Uh, you just squeeze the sides, the, cl the clasp opens, you put the test tube in, let go of the sides, and it kind of holds on to the test tube for you. The next thing is a test tube brush. Uh, this is obviously, duh, to use to clean the test tube. Uh, test tubes out. Just be careful with this. I've seen more injuries with a test tube brush than anything else. Uh, students get excited, they're cleaning their test tubes, and it you know, gets all soapy in there, and you, you know, put the brush in, and you, and you uh, move the brush up and down, the soap goes all over the place, and makes a lot of bubbles. It's kind of cool. But just be careful because if you jam these things into the test tube too hard, the bottoms of the test tube will break off. And then, of course, you have a danger of uh, cutting yourself because the bottom of the test tube, again, becomes very sharp. And depending on how you're holding it, uh, you could jam the, the test tube into your, your hand, uh, which obviously would not tickle and not you know, be a pleasant experience. So just kind of be careful when you're using a test tube brush not to hit the bottom of the t test tube too hard. Here's another type of stopper we use. This is called a cork stopper. You may you know, be wondering why we have two stoppers, you know. Well, some chemicals react with rubber, and if they do, then you're going to want to use a cork. And then, of course, some chemicals react with cork. Uh, cork stoppers are, you know, again, they're the same thing as rubber stoppers. Uh, they can you know, stop up the Erlenmeyer flask or Florence flask or test tube, it's, you know, just depending on the size of the cork. Eyedropper, everybody's probably used one of these. Uh, you know, it's just... It just allows you to move uh, small amounts of uh, liquid and uh, place the small amounts of liquid where you need it. Spatula. Uh, anybody who's been around a ki kitchen kind of knows what a spatula is. Now, the spatulas in a science lab and the spatulas in the kitchen are a little bit different in the fact that in the science lab, uh, they're made of metal and they have flat ends on each side. Uh, and the flat ends are what we can use to transfer small amounts of powder or solid 
or some people use them in dissection to move organs of whatever they're dissecting uh, um, things. So it's just, you know, they're kind of a, a useful tool uh, that can be used in a variety of different ways. Uh, we can also use them to spread, um, you know, the substance out on a glass slide. So they've got a variety of different uses. Stirring rods. Be careful. Again, our stirring rods are made of glass. They fall, they break, and then they have a sharp end to them. So just kind of be careful. Uh, if you break one, just let me know. Um, uh, but just kind of be careful. Now, stirring rods, their job is to uh, mix chemicals. You're probably going to, you know, well, why do they have to be glass? Why don't we just use straws or something like that? Well, chemical, you know, not too many chemicals out there react with glass. So that's why we use glass stirring rods. Uh, where, um, you know, if you're using a plastic straw, uh, if a solution's hot, it'll melt the plastic or it can react with the plastic and, and melt the plastic. Uh, certain chemicals are corrosive in that way. Um, well, well, they won't react with the, with the glass, so that's why we use glass stirring rods. The next tool we uh, commonly use is called the forceps, uh, also known as tweezers, um, but in science we call them the forceps, uh, and they're used for grasping and manipulating and extracting um, items out, uh, small things, uh, so and, or uh, stuff like we really can't use our fingers to grasp uh, very easily. The next tool is called the scalpel. It's basically a knife. Uh, we use it to cut things. Just again, obviously common sense tells you you need to be careful because there's a sharp end to that or sharp uh, blade. Um, but we use that for, for cutting. Thermometer, uh, obviously used to measure temperature. Uh, our thermometers are glass and alcohol based. So if one breaks, it's okay. It's not like uh, merc. There's also the mercury kind of thermometers. You don't find those too many, uh, too much anymore. Ours are alcohol-based, uh, and they're you I know mean, perfectly safe. But again, we use this to measure temperatures. Last thing is the funnel. Uh, this is used to transfer liquid, uh, especially if it you know a liquid from it has a small opening in the container. We'll use a funnel to make sure that the liquid doesn't spill all over the place. You know, like for example, test tubes. The mouth of a test tube is not very big. Uh, and if you're going to pour, you know, from a, a bottle, uh, trying to get into that test tube is kind of a, you know, you know, small target to hit. And so we'll use a, we can use a funnel to do that, to kind of make a bigger target and then getting a liquid down into the test tube or uh, some other device or uh, container that has a small mouth.